All right, here's a fun one. We'll, we'll go with it. Which one is more fun and who gets more chicks? Four minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Chase Shooting here, Staff Sergeant Shooting. If you're if you're nasty, and uh, I don't even know your rank. How do you I'm say nasty? You you are nasty. Yeah. Uh, my rank. So it'd be uh, Petty Officer Alexander, second class, currently. Petty or, or Officer. Yeah. Interesting. It's like officer, but we're not petty. real officers, but yeah. we're petty. Yeah. So me, Austin Alexander are on here, gonna be doing a little bit of a Q&A, military q and uh, I've done a lot of these on the channel. We're kind of breathing new life back into the military content. And, uh, you know, I figured I'd, I'd have a Navy guy on, throw him a slack. You're welcome. <laughs> Austin's got a phenomenal channel. He, he does military content challenges all the time. Definitely wanna check it out. And uh, we're gonna run through some general military Q&A as well as what's different about the Army, what's different about the Navy. Let's get going. I'm excited to do it. I'm very aroused. Is that petty? <laughs> that was kind of petty. It's okay. We stay aroused. Hashtag stay aroused. Hashtag stay aroused. Um, I found one that I wanted to get started off with. And where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, you're supposed to be organized. I've got, I got losing the Actually, I've got quite a few questions in here. I don't know which one to start off with. But um, this would be interesting because there are a lot of MOSs that are the same in every branch. But I'm sure each branch has their own. What MOS do you think is the hardest? Throughout the whole military i guess yeah or in the navy let's start with navy first like which one is the hardest you think in mos well you got two aspects of hard you have mentally hard and and physically hard yeah yeah and so i would say you know the hardest one in the navy is so or uh you know navy seal as far as being physically and mentally hard i, I feel like that's the other one now i know that sound that may sound like a cliche answer so the second one i'm going to say is probably a uh, nuclear field it's very, very academic. Oh, really? Damn. It's very yeah. academic. You have to have a, like a 90 plus on your um, ASVAB score. And a lot of the attrition rate is very, very high. I think only like maybe 12 to 15 cent percent of people. What'd you get on your ASVAB? 56. Oh, shit. Kind of low. Is it the same? It's like, uh, like yeah. the same for every ASVAB approach? is standard. Yeah. Damn. Okay. I haven't like I haven't even thought of I totally forgot you have to like do that just to like get in. People ask like, what your ASVAB yeah. score is. And I was like, I've been out for a minute. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot I, about that. I took the test pretty cold though. I didn't yeah. study for it. I was already, you know, three years out of high school. So okay, I did a lot of drugs. So all my, nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So yeah, 56, I was like, I'll, I'll take it. Let's do it. And that's what's unique about uh, the branches. I mean, depending on how you score on different tests, they open up new job opportunities. So, I mean, it's kind of a relative question. I'll say what is hard for one person in one category for an MOS uh, can be relative depending on how you score and which application. I mean, there's the D lab, there's ASVAB. You know, that's just just to get into like the opportunity to choose jobs. Yeah. I, I was in military intelligence. I think MI was very, very difficult. The, the range of scores and tests that I had to take and get just to even then like apply for that job. Mm -hmm. It was like a whole other job in the beginning. It was really difficult. So I would agree. I think depending on the job and is it more strategic or tactical? It's is it going to be more physically demanding or mentally demanding? Yep. Both eventually are both physically demanding and mentally. Um, it just depends on area of expertise, I guess. Did I answer the question? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I like this question a lot Hold actually. On. Your podcast, so you should know that you have to talk into the. <laughs> yeah, but see, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't do video on my podcast. Well, I do actually. Ah, I'm a fool. I'm a damn fool. All right, here we go. Coming in, hot mic, hot mic. Coming in, hot mic, hot mic. Okay. What is the most respected rate? Oh, I'd say any special programs for sure. See, I think respect uh, kind of opens up a can of worms. And by, I'm assuming, I don't know if this person's asking rate being grade or rank. Um, most respected, I'm mean, usually the higher up you go, you have more respect that comes along with it. Yeah. But I can tell you, I served a lot with people who weren't the highest grade, weren't the highest rank, but we all respected them just because of the quality of a leader that they were yeah. or past experiences that they had. And when it comes to rank, you never really know. I mean, there are some politics that play into getting promoted. There are some just things that happen in people's careers where they don't get enough points or maybe they even get demoted. But 
I, I've definitely had a lot more respect for people that were my same rank or below mm -hmm. than some some superiors. What about you? Yeah, I would say uh, the most respected rate, of course, I think, are the people that uh, the other rates support in the Navy. You know, I mean, the people that fire the missiles, the people that are actually on the ground, like SO, SW, you know. Um, all the support, all the support rates for sure. Like you're saying like in the S shops. Yeah. Well, well, see, I, it like you're saying that's a that's a subjective question that yeah. everybody would have a different opinion. But in mine, yeah. I mean, I respect the most probably the people like the special op special operators, um, explosives, ordnance disposal, special mm -hmm. warfare, combat crewmen. You have uh, all the hard, dirty jobs. You know, Navy yeah. intelligence attacks to them, and I'm sure they respect people on the backside too. So, uh, of course, most respected rank. I mean, when I look at a E1 and when I look at a 06, there's no comparison. Yeah. <laughs> you 06. Say, you you say, yeah. Uh, which one has the best quality of life, Army or Navy? Mm. I will dive into a little specific question. I mean, I will dive into a little specifics on this question. When do you guys receive basic allowance for housing? Is it at E6 or E5 or E4? Depends. Uh, you can get it E4. When I was serving, it was at E4, depending on uh, like the op tempo and like yeah. lodging and all that stuff. Okay. I, I got it as an E4. Okay. So yeah, it's probably the same. I know the Marines, they will not let you go out unless you're an E6 or married. Really? E6? Yes. Damn. Yeah. They won't let you uh, go out in town. But with the Navy and wow. Army... Um, housing allowance, you know, I was receiving housing allowance when I was in E4. Really? Okay. Yeah. See, it, it all kind of depends on like what's going on in the yeah. base, what's going on with your leadership. Exactly. Uh, better quality of life. I, I, so I was active duty army my whole time, but I spent most of my time on air force bases or joint command bases. Oh, so it was cake for you. Oh, it was so nice. The food, the defect and the air force was better. The yeah. lodging, the barracks were better. Uh, and then my time like overseas doing different stuff was all with like, foreign command. Um, so I actually spent least amount of time on army bases okay yeah we uh i had a i mean in a school we were on an air force base and it was nice man we had <laughs> breakfast served to us in bed every morning no 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 <laughs> no, no, no it's not no, like that but a, but the defect the food is the food is yeah good. um yeah. as far as you know everything else i don't i don't really know i think army and navy are kind of maybe the same similar yeah it's all it's all preference really you may one like you may like one x aspect can't yeah. talk today i got dyslexia we had a lot of setup issues. So he, he burned all of his yeah. burned all of his energy out earlier. Yeah, I was mad. I was okay, happens to, happens to lots of guys. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool, man. I was cussing. I was throwing stuff up against the wall. <laughs> um, all right, here's a fun one. We'll, we'll go with it. Which one is more fun, and who gets more chicks? Oh, Navy gets. I mean, we get all the chicks. We're exposed to a lot more females, and honestly, I'm not going to disagree with you. Uh, like I said, my AIT and most of my service was with Joint Command. Yeah. And uh, Navy cleaned house, man. They, they did pretty well. Not going to lie. But um, there, there's a lot of desperate dudes in the Navy. That's why. <laughs> uh, I um, had a lot of fun as a single guy in the Army. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, I, I, honestly, I give it up for, I think the Navy, total personal opinion here, you all have the most amount of uniforms and... Like if we're talking male, female here, like women love a guy in uniform and you guys like, you got the best uniforms. You got like 12 different uniforms. Well, we have the end up, we have the NSU Naval Service uniform. We have the dress whites and dress blues for winter and summer. I I had one. It was, it was, it, it was like my ACUs or, you know, yeah, my dress blues. Well, I guess technically we had three, I had dress blues, my, like the greens and then the yeah. fatigues. I actually started, I was back, this is, this is how I am. I was 03, 09. I actually started in BDUs, like the old school camo. Oh, yeah, I like this. And then about maybe two years in, we switched to the ACUs, the more kind of modern digital yeah. tech stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Army did plenty, but uh, Navy, I give it up for you, man. Wait, what was the first part of that question? <laughs> which one is, who, which is more fun? Oh, I guess, and by that, they mean who gets the most girls. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of fun, uh, but like I said, I, I worked Army. I worked Air Force, Navy, yeah. uh, Coast Guard. It's it's all personal experience. Yeah. You know, some guy in the Navy could have a really shitty experience and be stuck on one base and some guy in the Army, you know, it could be swapped. So, yeah, and there definitely was a lot of suck. But um, yeah, it all, it all depends on like how you look at it. Yeah. Quality of life, MOS. Um, First mental challenge joining the military. That's a good one. You go first. 
I'll just say boot camp. I mean, basic training. I, I had a little bit of preparation because my dad, he was in the army. And so we come from a, a lot of family history of service. And he told me like, look, yeah, physically it's going to suck. There are going to be some, you know, hard physical demands, but you know, we train for that mm. leading up to when I left for boot camp. But he's like, look, Chase, it's all a mind game. Like th they want you to succeed. They're just testing you because the job is going to be extremely demanding. You're yeah. stepping into a very demanding role. So for me, it was it was boot camp. I mean, yeah, it was extremely physically demanding, running, training all the damn time. But it was just keeping that thing in the back of your head of just they want me to succeed. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, I, I think for everybody, it's basic training. Um, of course, it's not a real serious mental issue because, you know, Petty officers will yell at you and then they'll go behind the corner and kind of laugh and you're kind of like, okay, cool. you know. Like, and oh, they're a human being too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the second big one for me was, so my regional rate was ND, Navy diver. And I'm a master at arms now because they didn't pass the training. But the training uh, was in Great Lakes. It was for seven weeks. You had uh, three weeks, I mean, sorry, four weeks of basic engineering common core, which is academic. And you had three weeks of being in the pool. And the, oh, wow. the training for the pool, I mean, I'm completely si fine. I'm a land creature. I can also swim, but it's when you take oxygen away from me, I start getting a little, you know, panicky. You mean when you can't breathe, it, it's hard for you to yeah. kind of, interesting. It's yeah, weird. a little bit. What a thought. And we did, we did this workouts called over-unders and we would switch up, you know, one person would go to the other side of the pool deck, we would do push-ups, and then the other side would be doing like pool dips and then we would switch. One would swim under and one would swim over. And it's when the people on top of you didn't cooperate correctly and you couldn't get up for air, you know, your heart's oh, racing because wow. you're yeah. constantly going back and forth. You're underwater, your heart's racing. You're just sitting there waiting like, okay, dude, you know, let me get up. I mean, you know, and if an instructor's under the pool, you have to give them the, the four and then fist to surface. So it gets a little hectic. That was a, that was a mental challenge for me, for sure. And I'll kind of like to extend on this question. I'll, I'll say that everything you go through in the military, yes, you're going to have some physical demands and there are physical like majority is physical training, mm. but it's all a mental toughness exercise. Because if you, well, the whole premise is, and I'm speaking purely from army, but I'm sure it's the same for you guys. It's how can we instill in you this, not only the mental fortitude, but just also like go back to your training, go back to your basics. So that when you do reach that point of freaking out or the other person to the left and right of you is not doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of just like reacting in a way that's only going to make the situation worse. It's what, what, what training can you go back to so that you survive and everybody else does too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's just meant, meant to callous your mind, you know, because when you experience one tough mental situation, you're always going to compare other mental situations to yeah. that one. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to get through life. Absolutely, man. Um, yeah. Also, my AIT was long as hell. Uh, it was, I was a Russian linguist. So every day for a year, I was just totally immersed in, in, in Russian everything. And I hated my life. Uh, but, uh, long AIT. Yeah. Bila govno. Ja još jo govoru po ruski dan noška. Let's go through. I had another one here. I should get a lot of questions here. Uh, this is a really good question that I think Austin is going to be a great, um, answerer for always am yeah you're a good answerer best ways to manage time to do creative things you enjoy while active duty like a company like running a company hand me that uh little whiteboard right here i'm gonna make it i'm gonna demonstrate oh you got he's got visual aids i got visuals for you guys this is the this is the best way and sometimes you exhibit sarah, a sometimes sarah helps me out it's schedule and you have to have enough discipline to stick to that schedule um because every minute counts you know I like to do minutes. Sarah does, she rounds it up, but I like to do minutes t to the T. Like, um, you know, wake up 6.30, have uh, strong greens and in focus to drink by 6.42. Use know. code Chase, save 10%. Uh, use code Austin, save 10%. Anyway. Use code Austin, save 10%. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, this is your channel. So I schedule things. So do not be scared to stick to a schedule. I know it may be hard, um, but give yourself a really loose schedule the first week and then Next week, tighten it down. Next week, tighten it down and constantly be improving. Of course, like today, we have the camera set up. I had a Zoom call at 2.30. Couldn't get the cards to work. So you just have to adapt and readjust sometimes. Adjust fire. Um, exactly. So schedule yourself. Be sure that you are keeping within those time frames and have enough discipline to stick to that schedule. I agree. And when I was active duty, I never 
I had no idea how to run a company. I had no interest. I was just, I was uh, just soldier chase. And uh, I think it's very different now where a lot of people have, whether you're in the military or nine to five, a lot of people have other interests and side hustles and uh, trying to create a company. But for me, I'll answer the question about how do you do creative things? Um, I'll interpret that meaning just like, how do you have a life outside of the military? Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it can become easier. I'll piggyback off of Austin's example. If you make time for it, it's very easy to just stay locked onto your mission and, and your training and all things that you need to do to, especially if you're going to be in it for a career, you always want to like try to advance yourself and, you know, get your promotion points up and, you know, camaraderie and relationship building. But honestly, don't forget that you're a person too. Don't forget that you, you need to build friendships and relationships and check in with your family and friends back home. So uh, I'll say for like the personal life stuff, just as important if you do want to have a side hustle or create a company schedule, like become super militant, hyper diligent with your time management to increase your productivity, to keep that creativity flowing, the personal life flowing and uh, transition out in a much better position like you're doing, man. Mm -hmm. Agreed. For show, for show. Uh, tell you scroll through here. We got a couple, got a couple screens oh, uh, of. Whoa, whoa, you pick a that? couple. That was a, that was a, a picture comparison of somebody that I, uh, okay. I, I know that looks exactly the same. Um, let's see here. Best thing to get from the military before leaving the branch. So I guess if you're gonna exit out entirely or maybe transition to a different branch. Yeah. Uh, that's how I would interpret it. Um, I would say uh, it could be, you know. Men probably mentally okay best thing to get unless you're planning to steal a bunch of uniforms or something well i'll say it, it going strictly to that question of branch if yep. we're s focusing on that word um, i think she means, mil means military i think so too but branch like certain branches of the military you can get promoted more quickly mm -hmm. even in the same mos like i know for example the the air force at least when i was in they didn't promote as fast for the same job as like i had in the army so i knew people who would they kind of did their homework ahead of time. They would pick the job that they wanted in a different branch so they could get promoted more quickly mm -hmm. and then transfer branches. So go from like army to air force or Navy or whatever. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, yeah. it makes sense. But I want to attack that question from a different side. Um, so if it, the question is best things to get from the military before leaving, I would say things that you're going to uh, definitely learn, you know, scheduling, time, scheduling your time. And you're going to learn that for sure. After you do uh, one contract or two contracts, you're going to learn how to deal with BS. You're going to learn how to schedule your time yeah. better and you're going to learn how to take your mistakes and keep rolling with them. I, I this is probably one of my favorite questions and the one that I get asked the most is, you know, or I wish people asked the most, actually, when I really think about it, I, if I went back, I left because it wasn't my choice. I was medically discharged. Um, I would say, even if you plan it going in, like I did in retiring, you never know what's going to happen. You never know if you're going to get injured or, you know, they downsize and people get forced into early retirement. So I would say go into the military aware of the things you need to do to make your career as successful and prominent as possible. Mm -hmm. Leadership, promotion, skills, training, um, education, knowing that you know, you're on a time window. Functionality, another thing, yeah. case in point, here we go. Um, I don't think people take enough advantage of the things that they can get out of the military while they're in. Go into it with your extra strategy in mind. Uh, I, I wish that I leveraged more of the opportunities of skills training, education, financial stuff. Um, I, I think most people separate and they don't have enough of a support system for that transition. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people suffer or wallow or. Yeah, f financial is yeah, definitely, yeah. if you can talk to your, you know, financial, financial advisor or counselor in the military, do it. Yeah, it, uh, there's no reason why anybody should leave the military without a degree, I think. Bare bones, you should have at least an associate's degree. Yeah. Odds are you can at least get your bachelor's done. Yeah, I, I chose the no college route because I want to prove a point. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, oh, that's interesting. You, you consciously chose not well, to. Well, it's also, it's because I have no time for school right now. I know it may, uh, it right. is a smart option. I You're would filling never, your time wisely. I would never recommend somebody to, like, no, don't take college. I always tell people to take college. But as for me, I don't, I'm not a college guy at all. Yeah. I mean, me either. I hate school. You know, I, I went to grad school. I, I hate it. That's just because yeah. I thought that's what I needed to do for my corporate life. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, especially active duty, you can still get free education, right? Free college courses. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's free education. Yeah. All your quals and everything. They, yeah. they like that. Um, Big another one, man. Let's see. Do you regret joining the military? 
Do I regret it? Absolutely not. Yeah, same. I, I don't think any. I don't think I've met anybody that's ever regretted joining the military. I know a few people. Really? Uh, I think that's because they went into it with false expectations, or they thought it was going to be something grander. And yeah. I I think they either had no idea what they're getting themselves into, or their recruiter completely lied to them, or whatever. But I mean, it's the military. Regardless of the branch you're going into, it's the most demanding physically, and mentally job on the entire planet. Yeah. So you can't go into it thinking like any other job. Oh. I'll take this and if it doesn't work out, I'll put in my two weeks notice kind of thing. Um, yeah, you, do your homework. You committed. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I know, I do know of some people that have went to boot camp be like, oh, this is not for me. And they do anything they can to get out of it. Oh, so many people rocked out purposefully. I, I knew yeah. there were two people in my basic that uh, pulled the, I'm going to commit suicide card. Yeah. And which then was even more of a pain in the ass for us because then we're on 24 hour suicide watch and, yeah, it's me. Watches. That's Did you real, have anybody like a, that? Yeah, that's a real thing. Probably 10 or 15 people in Bahrain I had to stand watch over. Take their shoelaces out. And, yep. yeah. Well, they weren't in like, they, well, we called it a crazy room. They weren't in anything like that. It's just they would have a counselor come and talk to me. It was a more okay, relaxed yeah. environment. Yeah, which actually, that's a, um, a good next question. You're talking about being in Bahrain. Um, one, someone asked, it was like about a deployments. Uh, how many deployments have you been on? So I've been on, I went on the Carl Vinson seven month deployment. And then a lot of people say Bahrain is a deployment, but that it's not a deployment. It's, it's a duty station rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In my time I was actually, uh, that was, I said earlier that I got medically discharged. I was injured in war game pre-deployment training. Uh, I, I, I was never deployed. I was on a couple different rotations you know, I, I would train different duty stations, you know, stateside. Uh, I was went on a short rotation over in Germany for Joint Operations Command training rotation. Uh, it was language training, but we we're also attached to US Special Forces where we had British, we had Canadian. It was all there for focus on intelligence and, and language training, but also like how well can different units work together? How well can different militaries work together? Yeah. Uh, it was like a joint training command, but like like a mini rotation kind of thing. And then, uh, yeah, I uh, wanted to change out of my regular day to day job and then just volunteered for an intelligence assignment for deployment to Afghanistan, got injured and then never happened. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, you got to go to Germany if, if you are considering the military. I say the travel is worth it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's another thing I didn't capitalize on enough was try to just volunteer for every assignment, every deployment I could. Yes. And, and when you're in these locations, like you were in Germany, I'm sure you could have flown to different places that are uh, closer for a lot. Oh yeah. We would hop on a train. Uh, when we had, when I was there, we had a couple like three day weekends Mm -hmm. and we would hop on a train. I went to, we go to Prague, went to Austria, Switzerland right there. Once in a lifetime opportunities. Yeah, on someone else's dollar, and especially when you're on TDY or another rotation, you're usually making a little bit more money, like a per diem. And so not only are you in another location, but you're actually making a little bit more money. So if you're not capitalizing on that, not exploring the world, exploring yourself, like what are you doing? Yeah, we were in, when I was in Bahrain, we were going to, you know, took a little boat out to Drada Island, with flew to Dubai for like $75, flew to Oman for like oh, $200. Way, really? It was great. That's awesome, man. We, we, would, we, went, we went quite a few times. That's incredible. Let me see if we got one or two more. Uh, right. These have been great questions. Uh, anything like top of mind for you that you get asked a lot about, unique to the Navy or just the military in general that uh, I get asked so talk many on? questions. There's no. What's like, the most frequent question you think you get about, it's about the military? Master at Arms? Uh, why I recommend Master at Arms? Of course, if you if you're not interested in law enforcement, I would not re- recommend Master at Arms. 24 minutes already checked. Uh, <laughs> so, this guy's a pro, man. Because <laughs> um, our camera reco- can record for only 29 minutes because oh, okay. Yeah, we'll do one more and wrap up. Okay, cool. So the question I get asked the most is Master Arms. Why do I recommend Master Arms? Because you can go into so many different things. You can go into military working dog, you can go into Harbor Patrol, you can go into Co- Coastal River on squad, you can go to Coastal River on Groot, which is providing expeditionary security. I know I'm talking fast. Providing expeditionary security on um reserve and naval ships you can go on to be uh anti-terrorism you know tactical watch officer there's so many different things you can do as an ma you can go into ncis you can go into uh cid you can go into like there's there's you're talking opportunities within the navy and then others outside of opportunities within specifically the ma rate okay gotcha now you can you can do other things from other rates like i know ls can be coastal river on squadron which is um Swick, not on steroids. Swick is Swick, but you're just you're on a small boat basically. I don't speak your freaking Dutch. Swick is special warfare combat crewman. It's uh, 
they go the same training route as seal except they break off before buds they don't go to buds uh okay cool yeah. so a lot of the preliminary trainings the same yes okay and uh, i think they go to the same weapons as uh, sqt or that seal qualification yeah but yeah so unique to me, like my MOS, like I was, uh, was it started off as a 98 X-ray, then it converted it into a 35 series, 35 Papa. I was a intelligent. <clears throat> yeah, see, this is, this is gibberish to me. Yeah, no. <laughs> so I was in the Intel field. Like I said, we got transferred to a 35 series. I was a 35 Papa intelligence analyst with a language, which is so funny to me actually, because through like high school, I had to take summer school for Spanish. I sucked at language uh -huh. training, yeah. but they dangled this $20,000 enlistment bonus in front of me. I was like, okay. I, I went, I took the D lab scored well, or I took the ASVAB scored well, took the D lab scored well. I don't know how. And then they, they assigned the language to you. They choose the language that you test out for. Mm -hmm. They gave me Russian. So after boot camp, like, Hey, you got Russian orders. You go on to Monterey. You're going to learn this language every day for a year, total immersion, hated my life, but an amazing job, an amazing field. And I would recommend going into the MI field. Even if you don't think you're going to go into the military for a career, a lot of my peers did this because you, it's a minimum, I think, four year contract for that job. Uh, it's a very competitive, but then it's a huge springboard. You get out, you get your top level security clearance, uh, top secret, even beyond that. I could tell you more, but I have to kill you. Uh, but most people then would go in after four years, they get out and they're qualified for FBI, uh, CIA, NSA. Uh, they have their clearance, they have experience, and it was just an incredible opportunity. So mm -hmm. I love that job. I actually, that's why when I, when I volunteered for the deployment, I was trying to get over there. I actually wanted to change MOS I really enjoyed that job, but I knew that I wasn't going to do it full time. Mm -hmm. So that's how I was, I was trying to transition out, but it was a great opportunity for, for your civilian self. I love the MI field, a lot of bonuses, a lot of qualifications you got to meet, but, um, I mean, you can make it lucrative for sure. Cool. Well, that's a wrap. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Thanks for, uh, thanks, thanks for, for the studio. Thanks this for having dope. me in my own studio. Thanks for having me in my <laughs> own studio. Uh, yeah. I'm going to have Austin's channel link down below. You guys, if you want to check him out, he does incredible content, pretty much all military, right? Uh, no, I, I do majority. Well, I'm leaning towards more challenges and fitness. Yeah. Now. Yeah. His videos blow up. He kills it. Um, he's got huge celebrity YouTubers on there. Uh, his challenges are great. And, uh, yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll be doing more standalone military topics, Q and A's. Um, like I said, I was active duty or three to nine E six when I separated. What's your grade right now? Um, uh, E five E five. Yep. Okay. So, uh, I'm basically better than you. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But I get the women, remember that? <laughs> True. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. All right, thanks.